Hello and welcome to the Mr. 50mm YouTube channel. I'm Mr. 50mm, but you can also call me Chris. For today's video, we're going to see what it's like to shoot with the Olympus E300 right here. Unfortunately, there's no weird funky mystery with this camera for this video. It's just pure funk. I mean, look at this thing. It is a thing of beauty. The Olympus E300 is the second camera in the Four Thirds system. The camera was released at the tail end of 2004. It features an 8 megapixel Kodak CCD sensor, and the uh, Four Thirds format is actually the same size as the modern Micro Four Thirds format now, so it's a two times crop factor sensor. It has an ISO range of 100 to 400 with a boost option to 800 and 1600. It shoots at 2.5 FPS for about four whole frames, and it has a three-point AF system. It has a, a small rear screen that apparently has hyper crystals in it, and about 134 K dots worth of them. Oh, and of course, this camera takes compact flashcards. This time, the camera does support FAT32, so you can use bigger cards. I'm currently using a four gig card, uh, and I did load up 16 gigabytes, and it did work. SD card to CF adapters also work well as well. And the camera weighs about 624 grams or 1.4 pounds or about two thirds of plena. It uses re readily available BLM1 batteries, which is nice because uh, yeah, you can still order these on eBay or uh, Amazon. The camera also features something that isn't that common on uh, cameras of this time, sensor cleaning. Weird, right? Now, when this camera was new, it cost a whole 999 USD with a kit lens, or about 1350 Canadian dollars. In modern dollars, it's about 1500 USD, or the entire GDP of Canada. At this point, I assume that everyone's familiar with the design of the E300 being a bit unique, and I'm sure people are already aware that it uses the uh, Poro Finder and Sideways Mirror to accomplish this weird design. Uh, since this camera is uh, apparently pretty hyped up now. But yeah, so it has one of those and it does make it look super cool. It's only one of two DSLRs to have the style of finder. The other being the successor to the E300, the E330. Uh, but the E330 seems like it's less sought after since it doesn't have a CCD. What kind of caveats do you gotta consider before you pick up uh, Olympus E300? Well, this one thing that has been brought up by many YouTubers uh, is pretty big, and I'm gonna bring it up again. And that one big caveat is uh, the lens options for the four thirds system. It's kind of limited. There are only really 25 first party lenses, and for the ones that are fairly desirable, they're sometimes rare and expensive. Uh, Additionally, things that exacerbate this uh, lens scarcity are the fact that the uh, four thirds system wasn't very long lived and like quickly got replaced by the micro four thirds mount that we all know and love. Uh, and just for a bit of context, if you think 25 lenses sounds like a pretty reasonable amount, the Canon EF or EFS mount lenses uh, have about 212 lenses to choose from. So that mount ends up being so ubiquitous and the variety of lenses you can get range from budget cheap options to you know several thousand dollar options. And a lot of the times the lenses that you'd normally wanna have to start off a kit are easy to find. One of the concepts of the four thirds system was that due to the smaller sensor size, you could kind of in theory have a smaller and lighter uh, camera body and camera system as a whole. And this is partially true, specifically for the lenses. You might've noticed there that there's uh, on this one, a very tiny little pancake lens, it's 25 millimeter F 2.8. Uh, it's really small and it's really lightweight and pretty good quality. Uh, now, for the uh, lenses, this is generally true, but uh, oddly enough, for the E300 itself, it's not actually particularly light. It is actually uh, small though, 
Uh, but that is probably less to due to the fact that the sensor is a four thirds sensor and then more due to the fact that you got kind of a lot of space savings from using the weird plural finder that occupies the mirror box. But basically it's a sideways swinging mirror that allows the viewfinder uh, to be offset right where my finger is. So turn around, you can have a look. Uh, so for physical size, it is smaller than normal, uh, but the mass is, like I said, kind of very similar to contemporary uh, DSLRs at the time. It's heavier than the Pentax IST DS, and it's only 20 grams lighter than the Canon 300D, the original digital Rebel. So despite the camera being, uh, like I said, relatively small, not super small, it feels really good in hands. It's just really well built. Uh, again, especially if you consider it to the original Rebel, which is like mostly plasticky feeling and feels not so well built. Uh, this camera feels a lot more solid by comparison. Uh, the controls are pretty standard for the camera of the time. You know, you have a mode dial, command dial, and a bevy of useful buttons in the back as well as a deep head for navigating the menu and image review. Overall, it offers a reasonably intuitive shooting experience. Uh, and again, the camera grip, it's really well shaped. And at least for my hands, it like sits beautifully. Uh, everything can almost be done uh, when you're shooting with, everything, with uh, access to the buttons on just your right thumb there. So like I said, well-designed camera. And again, with the smaller pancake lens here, the camera is pretty well balanced. Now, when you're using the camera and if you have to actually go and dive into the menu, navigation is blissfully simple. Only really five pages to go through. Let's see if I can pull those up. Here we go. So if you have a look, Simple menu system, amazing. I wish we had more of this now. Uh, random tangent though, uh, although normally I don't actually use onboard flashes a lot. I really love the way that this one pops up. Just kind of shoots up. It looks very cool, at least I think so. So, with the E300, I really like shooting the uh, 25mm f2.8 that you see pictured here. It really does look amazing on the camera. It's also actually just a good lens. It's really sharp, it's got good contrast, and it's light. It also bounces the camera really well. Honestly, though, the fun thing is, with this lens on the camera, it makes the camera look smaller than it is. Like, it looks tiny. But, here is something to consider. Here is the Olympus E420 uh, with the 14 to 42 kit lens. Now I'm going to put it right at the same level as the uh, my face there. Then I'm going to hold it up beside the E300. Now the E420 is lighter and overall almost in every direction smaller than the E300, with the exception of that finder bump. Kind of weird, right? Like, but like I said, the pancake makes this lens or makes the camera system look smaller as a whole, and it looks just great on the on the camera. But other lenses I do like using with the uh, E300 are the 35 uh, 3.5 macro. It's a little bit bigger, but it also bounces well on the camera, and for a uh, macro lens, it is very small, it's pretty light, and it's actually pretty cheap for one of the nicer four-thirds lenses. Now, it isn't all sunshine and a happy time shooting with the E300. There are a couple niggles that kind of dig at me with regards to this camera. 
Uh, one of them being that the camera does like to sometimes remind you that it's 20 years old via its uh, kind of low raw uh, buffer depth and uh, it's slow frame rate. So it only shoots at 2.5 FPS, FPS, which is normally fine. Uh, but the fact is the, the buffer depth is four frames. Four frames is not a lot of frames. And this kind of annoyed me a lot when I was shooting in like less than good light where you'd normally prob probably want to steady yourself up and take a quick burst so that you could maybe get one of the shots that are, you know, uh, without any motion blur. Because this camera doesn't have any uh, anti-shake or uh, IBIS, right? Uh, so normally what would happen is, yeah, I'd steady up, take like a uh, couple shots, and then I'd forget that the uh, buffer fills at four. So i just sit there and wait for it to clear, and then do it again and line up for a couple more shots until I thought that I had a reasonably good photo. Uh, another thing is a consequence of the four-third sensor being a two times crop is that the finder is smaller than what you might be used to if you're coming from APS-C or full frame. Now, I'm personally pretty spoiled. Most of the times I've shot with a digital SLR, I shot with either a full frame digital SLR, or you know, if I was using a mirrorless system, I'd be using one, be using one with a really late, like a nice EVF. So it it never really like dawned on me that like a finder would annoy me. But this the four third system finders are just they're a bit small. Uh, again, not a huge problem if you're not used to, if you're already like used to like a APS-C uh, DSLR or like, you know, if you're just hopping in, it's probably not going to bug you that much. But if, if you are coming from a full frame uh, optical finder, this may, this may annoy you. Uh, additionally, the AF system, it's only three points and really only one of those is worth using, the center. Uh, so that's not a big deal. Uh, I normally would have used, uh, you know, one uh, focus point and basically do the center focus and recompose to take the shot. Uh, so it's not too bad. Uh, and the system, when it works, it's pretty accurate. But I did find that even compared to other systems of the era, it felt like it was a bit slower to kind of lock on. Uh, however, that might just be me. Another thing that is a little annoying is if you like kind of tweaking your focus and you know grabbing the manual focus string to give uh, an adjustment, or if you want to just like change it, uh, the system for the uh, four thirds system is fly by wire, so it's really not the greatest. Uh, this doesn't super bug me because I don't do it that often, but I know it would bother some people. Additionally, ISO also feels a bit limiting. The normal range is 100 to 400 with the expansion options of 800 and 1600. Uh, it's not actually that bad though, because you know, modern software allows you to kind of handle the uh, noise pretty well. Uh, like even me using like raw therapy free software with the noise reduction, uh, the files look okay when you, if you have to end up pushing them. The eight megapixel sensor itself takes a pretty good image. It's got usually pretty punchy, vibrant colors, and the eight megapixel size means that they're still pretty good for web use and you know for moderate prints. Uh, that being said, a lot of people are reporting some CCD magic happening on the E300. Uh, I unfortunately did not see it. Uh, this might be because a lot of the reviewers pointed out that, you know, right of a camera JPEGs looked really cool. Uh, and I almost always only shoot raw on my cameras. I kind of just like the post-processing stuff that I do. Uh, additionally, I might also have been a little biased that I have an other CCD censored cameras that I super duper like, and I may cover them at a later date. Okay, it's gallery time. Here's where I'm gonna spill some beans. Or tea. What's the lingo now? Tea beans? Whatever. Are you ready? Are you strapped in? Socks pulled up? All right, here it is. I actually didn't connect very well with this camera. Don't get me wrong. I really like the experience of using it, of shooting it, of holding it, of doing all the picture takey things. It was a cheap, fun way to get a look into some older CCD DSLRs. However, 
at the end of the day, when I was actually importing my images, I realized that the keeper rate for this camera, for me, was just kind of terrible. It's not that the photos were out of focus, poorly exposed. There's just something about the photos that just wasn't doing it for me. I would do some edits and then I would just not export the photos. I didn't really think they're they worth exporting. So a lot of images that I took, they ended up being deleted. Uh, at the end of the day, I could stare at this camera all day long. I admire the style, but I just don't really, I guess, enjoy the photos that I make with it. Even though the journey of taking the photos usually is excellent fun. But yeah, that's just me though. So, do I recommend one of these? Well, yes. In spite of all the niggles that I brought up, in spite of the lens selection, that kind of makes it hard to get some nice lenses for. Uh, I actually really like just using the camera. Uh, even in spite of the fact that I actually personally didn't super enjoy the images that came out of it, but that's just me. And I think if you're a fan of older CCD look and you're a fan of this design, this is worth getting. Now, I think that if you're just after the CCD though, uh, there are better options to look at that would cost you less money, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, but like I said, if you are into design and you're into the CCD look and you want to try a four third system camera, I think it's worth giving it a go. Maybe you'll connect with this camera better than I did, and maybe you'll love the pictures that come out of it like other re reviewers do. Maybe you won't. I'm not you. But I think it's worth a recommendation. So if you do want one of these, the typical growing rate looks like right now on the ease of base. They hover between 130 and 175 freedom units for a working one, obviously. Now, sound like a little little bit of an ask for an older camera it doesn't really have a super special feature set unless you count the poro finder one uh, but if you're just after the cc look of the uh olympus persuasion which is a uh, you know the kodak sensor uh, i would also consider looking at the olympus e500 uh, these tend to be cheaper than the 300, and I suspect that's because they use a more conventional, less funky looking design. So if you can forego the super cool design, look for the E500 instead. It is functionally otherwise like basically the same camera. Now with that being said, thanks for sticking to the end with me on this review and journey of the E300. Uh, what do you think of this camera? Do you have one? Do you plan to get one? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time. Bye.